Aloha everyone, it is I, Mark Major, and this is the Action Figuratorium, and I'm going to start off by asking the question to all of you, does anybody here remember Battle Beasts? If you do, good news, they're coming back, but not officially licensed. No, it is a Kickstarter campaign someone has called Combat Creatures, and they're taking the aesthetic of the Battle Beasts, and they're turning them into sort of six inch action figures. Um, basically, they are anthropomorphic animals wearing armor, carrying um, guns and swords. And that's what we're gonna take a look at today. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, why don't you guys all strap on the leather and hold on tight. All right, one of the things that I like to do when I um, appraise these action figure Kickstarters is I have them go up against my three best practices that I have determined from looking at several successful Kickstarters. We'll get into those three best practices in a bit. I just want to say that there is a little bit of objectivity to when I review these. But I'm also going to give you some opinion at the end. What do I think? Are these good? Are these bad? Should you probably uh, throw some money into them? Should you pass? That kind of thing. And um, I'm sure we're all going to, um, to learn a lot with uh, today's episode. Let's switch over to desktop cam. I love desktop cam. It's really exciting. Where is that walrus battle beast? I'm going to need this guy for, uh, for spiritual guidance throughout the show. So he's going to be right here as necessary, and he may comment. All right, so what are these combat creatures? Well, um, this is a campaign. They're trying to raise $65,000. They're currently up to $29,000 and change. They're close to halfway there. There's essentially four figures the guy is offering. There's a lion man. There is a, um, a wolf uh, guy. There is a bear person. And there is a shark dude. There's the lion. He comes with um, a couple different heads or at least uh, a helmet. He's got some weapons, some hands. I don't think he comes with those crates. If you want to see something interesting, check out my video called Time to Crate, in which I... Uh, invoke the spirit of a gaming website called Old Man Murray. It's quite interesting. Here's the 3D blown up version of it. Um, here's the bear. And uh, we can see the shark and of course the, uh, the wolf right there. Now there are some unlocks as well. If he can get to them, let's go down to those. There's an eagle. I think this guy uh, could be cool. I don't particularly like the way he did this armor. It looks very sort of American Gladiator, same thing with the Raven. They're basically the same, but with a slightly different paint job and um, maybe a slightly different head sculpt, not sure. There's also these um, little 3D printed battle beasts of the figures you can get as well. You can get either for $10 the digital download uh, of it that allow you to print as many of them yourself with your own 3d printer or for 15 bucks he'll print you one but i don't think they come painted i think you just get one uh, there is also a four inch version of the figure this of course is a uh, 25 dollars 3d print the guy prints out and he um, sends it to you unpainted that kind of thing the other guys for 35 dollars a fig uh is uh for the 6.5 inch guys that is the full-blown deal i believe that that's mainly what he's trying to sell. The other things are just extra sort of tchotchkes that are thrown in to get this thing, you know, going in the right direction. Okay, so let's um, look at my three pillars of uh, best practice for action figure Kickstarters. They are three-tiered pricing. That means the campaign's gotta have a cheap thing that anyone can buy. It's got to have a deluxe thing that people who have more money are willing to spend more money can buy, and it has to have a luxury item, something that is priced um, sort of really expensive for no other reason other than to be something really expensive. Of course, those who come to Kickstarter with a wider selection of figures 
get much, much bigger um, grosses at the end than someone who just launches with one figure. And of course, those who have all of their or the best of their marketing right on Kickstarter um, always do much better than, than guys who make you try and find the, um, you know, the figures, what they look like compared to other figures um, and stuff on looking on Facebook and, and YouTube interviews on podcasts and stuff like that. Put it on Kickstarter. That's what I say. Just put it all right there in front of them and, uh, and let Kickstarter do all the selling. You shouldn't have to go anywhere else. So um, with that, let's uh, see how these guys compare. Do they have sort of three items of, uh, of different tier pricing? Well, they sort of do. They've got the $15 um, cheapo uh, battle, you know, 3D printed battle beast this size. And they also have $25 for uh, the four inch guy. And of course, 35 bucks, I guess, would be considered a sort of a deluxe. I do not see a luxury item other than someone might buy all four of the figures for, I think it's something like around $120. That's the closest thing to a luxury item. But what this guy should have done is he should have come up with some sort of a, a expensive thing that people could just dump their money into, like a, you know, like a play set of some sort, like a throne or some sort of, um, you know, a vehicle or... Um, also, I should say he, this guy should probably get things like weapons packs and accessory packs, that kind of stuff. Those little sort of tchotchkes, including, you know, keychains and hats and hot sauce and shirts and stuff. They all go a really long way to padding out these Kickstarters and getting the numbers up there and getting them to be big numbers. And the more stuff you sell, the more money you make, the more power you have to, uh, to launch your own toy company and go forward. And maybe, just maybe... You don't have to do crowdfunding on the next round. So I think that this guy is doing pretty close. I would say pretty close to the um, to the uh, the pricing as far as the wide selection. He's got four characters plus a couple of unlocks. That's a total of six guys. Um, again, I would have had uh, some guys a little dip priced a little differently. I would have a few guys a little cheaper and a couple guys of the, you know, the six inch dudes, a couple guys, a little more expensive, whatever that takes to make them more expensive. Maybe they come in gold or something. I don't know. You just need to brainstorm something to make that work. But I think that this guy is definitely going to hit the, the funding. He's easily going to hit probably a hundred thousand with this 24 days to go. I think a lot of people are definitely going to be into these guys, um, because they look to me like they're going to play pretty nice. Um, with all the other figures, with your Mythic Legions and with your Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. And you can probably shoehorn him into some crazy, um, you know, space battles with the Guardians of the Galaxies uh, in your Marvel Legends figures or um, who knows, you know. I mean, they, they let that rabbit figure, Jackson, into um, Star Wars. So why couldn't one of these guys, you know, sort of, um, why couldn't this bear hang out with some uh, Black Series Wookiees or something? I don't know. No reason why these guys can't can't fit into everybody else's toy line in addition to their own. Um, I think they've got pretty good marketing stuff up on Kickstarter. I think it's good enough. Uh, I did watch the video. The video sounded like a trailer to a movie. I wasn't buying it. It sounded weird, creepy, and, uh, and unusual, but that's okay. It's better than nothing. I would have loved to have just gotten um, less backstory on the figures and just more uh, beauty shots of them, you know, sort of on Lazy Susans and crane shots and, and really well lit and cool environments. I think that that would sell better than the uh, the idea of who these guys are. But, you know, you, you throw out everything, you see what sticks, and the worst thing is you make a couple different videos and put them all out. That's what I would do. All right, so then um, uh, what do I sort of feel about these figures uh, overall? Um, in looking at them, uh, I think that the um, I I think that the the sculpts at this point are, are kind of generic. I think that they have a little bit too much uh, iconography on them of the figures themselves. For example, you've got this lion guy. He comes with an extra lion head and maybe a lion helmet, and he's also got a lion head on his shoulder, and he's got one on his belt. 
There could be one on the sword. There could be one on the gun. There's just too many like heads on these things, and it's with all these guys. They they all have this problem. They all have one of their shoulders as a head. The belt is a head. There's just too many heads, right? And um, that's the first thing. The second thing is the um, the sort of the space armor, the fantasy space armor is uh, a bit too sort of video game cliche for me. I would love to see something a little bit even more unusual. It looks a little stock. It looks like you just took human guys, put armor on them, and then stuck a, um, an animal head. I think, uh, I think there's plenty of room to do something that specifically looks like shark armor, something that looks like bear armor. I think you'd need to lean a little further into the whole like animal nature of these guys. Um, another thing about the shark that I think would have been cool is if uh, the shark would have actually had a helmet, or not a helmet, but a, um, yeah, like a, a breathable uh, tank uh, above the, around the head that would be full of water so that he's able to breathe water um, outside of water, like he comes out of the water and he's got that thing on, and um, and so he that's how he's able to be on, walk around on land. I think that would have been cool. And if I'm to back one of these guys, I'll tell you right now that is definitely going to be the very first thing I do in terms of modding these is getting a sort of a, a, a bubble around the dude and put some water in it. I think that would be very hip. Um, also, for those of you who really love uh, shark men. Um, I can't recommend enough, and this is going to be in a future episode where I build this. This is a model kit made by a company called Number 57. This guy is called Deep Sea Ripper. And uh, if I hold him up there, you can see it's this 124th scale shark action figure. He comes with two different uh, shark heads where one's closed and one's the mouth open, and another shark head that is a hammer head. Uh, in addition to that, there's also those exact same three heads but in white unpainted. Why is that? I don't know, but you get them. Uh, Deep Sea Ripper, I think I paid 16 bucks and then whatever it costs to ship. Um, got it at one of those crazy anime figurine websites out there. Not difficult to find. Put in number 57, Deep Sea Ripper. Anyways, that's a bit of a personal plug. If you're into um, shark men and that kind of stuff and you're digging this video because you saw shark man, just know there's other shark men out there, okay? This isn't the only guy you can get your fix and get your fix elsewhere. But if I was to back this, and I'm a little bit on the fence because I've been spending a lot of money, right? And you're not going to get these guys for probably at least two years at this point. Um, it would be money spent that I wouldn't see for quite a while. And a lot of times, got to be perfectly honest... Um, when these Kickstarters finally ship, we find that all the exact same figures are for sale on Big Bad Toy Store for three or four bucks more, right? But check it out. Big Bad Toy Store does $4 shipping. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes it actually ends up cheaper to wait and get it on Big Bad Toy Store with the $4 shipping than to pay in advance and pay this guy shipping, which is probably going to be something like 13 bucks, right? And you'll actually end up paying more. And sometimes we've seen with Kickstarters like um, Kentucky Fried Toys with their uh, dime novel legend Kickstarter campaign with Animal Warriors of the Kingdom Kickstarter campaign. They actually got the toy figures in. They started fulfilling uh, some of the toy store orders and some of the direct orders off their website. And they have waited to fill their Kickstarter orders to actually fill them last. So there's no guarantee by doing a by buying and backing a Kickstarter that you're going to get it cheaper after the fact and that you're going to get it first. Because we're seeing that these guys, these Kickstarter campaigns, these indie toy companies, they play, in my opinion, just a little bit dirty. And I think we might need to make a video addressing that in the future. If anyone would like to see that, just leave a comment and I will, um, you know, I'm sitting around here. I got, I got time on my hands. I could crank one out. Trust me. But these guys overall, I think that they look, uh, you know, I'll be honest, they, they look pretty good, but they also at the same time, they look a little rough. The prototypes, the heads looked a little rough. The painting looked a little rough. Um, I, I think the armor is good, but it could also be 
uh, much better, much crazier. I think if you're competing nowadays with stuff, you really got to go all out. I think these guys are a perfect challenger to animal warriors of the kingdom. As you know, I have a phrase for every Coke. There is a Pepsi, and if uh, AWOC is Coca-Cola, these guys could definitely come in and be the Pepsi to them. I think there's plenty of room for both. Um, I would like to see this fund. I would like to see this become a legitimate toy company. I'd like to see this guy um, every year, um, uh, maybe twice a year, put out another wave of these guys, another four or five guys in the series and if he wants to keep doing the little battle beast guys to go with it i think that's kind of cool too that sort of adds an interesting facet to the figures and the toy company itself i don't think it's a make or break i don't think he needed to do this in fact i don't think he also needed to do the four inch figure but if that gives him wider selection and all he's got to do is hit a button and it prints at his place and it's affordable to him to, to do these guys for 15 bucks or the four inch guy for $25, then by all means do it, especially if you don't have to paint them, if you just have to put them in a bag and you just you know throw an envelope and you say, good luck. I think that's okay. I think it's all very doable. So yeah, this guy's definitely, in my opinion, going to fund. He's probably easily going to hit about $100,000. Is he going to go much higher? Don't know. Don't know. It depends. If he had even more unlocks, pretty good chance, but we'll see what happens. So we're going to conclude uh, this episode. Uh, thanks, everybody, who made it this far into the video. If there's something you didn't care for, let me know in the comments, and we'll try and take care of it on the next one for you.